Not bad. I reckon this Jesus guy. All around the world, in the next week, there are going to be people that are giving presents to each other in recognition of the gift that God gave to us. Every tribe, nation, tongue, it's going to happen. Millions of people. People are going to be having holidays. Who's having a holiday? Yep, well, you better thank Jesus for that because if it wasn't for him, you'd still be working. Amen? You'd still be working this weekend. You wouldn't have this day off. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Not bad. Calendars kind of before and after shaped around his existence. People that follow him started hospitals. They started public education. Followers of Jesus took in children when societies thought that that sick kids should be left on the streets. I was just sitting there singing these songs and thinking, you know, when Jesus was born, there were different reactions, weren't there? There were some people like, you know, uh, Hark the Herald Angels Sing and the wise men came bringing gifts. I saw a card many years ago. Two old ladies were sitting there debating the miraculous uh, conception of Jesus. And one of them turned to a friend and she said, Look, a virgin birth I can buy, but three wise men? Which was the bigger miracle? But all around the world, the influence of this man. And some people loved him. There were prophecies about him hundreds of years before he came and bang, there he was. And many people recognised that Jesus was the Son of God, that God had been speaking about this for hundreds, if not thousands of years, that this moment would come, that God's love for us was so immense that he would make a way, that we could come back into relationship with him. This was foretold. Some people were really excited and they recognised that when it happened. Some people didn't, hey. There was a king at the time. He wasn't happy about the birth of Jesus. He actually found out about it and wanted to take this child out. He was fearful. So fearful, in fact, that every child, I think, two and under, he sent a decree, let's wipe them all out just so we don't miss this kid. All these various different reactions to the birth of Jesus. But I'm so grateful for that moment in human history. One thing that we can't dispute, people will dispute the resurrection. We'll, I'll talk to you about that come Easter. But the birth of this man, Jesus Christ, verifiable, really happened. So much evidence. So much evidence. And there's never been a man in human history or woman that has been more influential than Jesus. You ever thought about that? Never. Has there been a person more influential in human history than Jesus? Yet again, there'll be so many different reactions to that. This thing's just died on me. Technology is supposed to make life easy. And Jesus didn't have to deal with this when he was preaching. John 3.16 says this. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever shall believe in him shall have everlasting life. Then it goes on in the next verse and it says that God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him. Uh, Rod, can you come here? You didn't know I was going to do this, but can you come up the front for a second? And Owen, Owen, where are you, Owen? Can you come up too? Just stand either side of me. I just want you to look out at everybody. And Rod, I want you to give me your grumpiest old man face. Just give everyone the grumpiest old man face you can. Elaine, is that the best he's got? No, she's... Yeah. Oh, I knew it. I'll give you one more chance. Your best... Okay. Okay. Owen, give me your best grumpy old man face. Okay, back it up, you two. Back it up. We're here for love. Just love. 
Okay, let's just very, very quickly, best grumpy old man face over here. Give me a cheer. Best grumpy old man face. Hey, all that proves is that you're not a grumpy old man. Rod, well done. <laughs> you can sit down now. Isn't it amazing? So many people... I left you hanging, didn't I? Yeah, I thought so. So many people, that's the image of God, isn't it? The grumpy old man face. That's what we think of God, don't we? We think he's the grumpy old man, angry, just wants to pay us all back for the wrong things that we've done. Can't wait for that moment where we stand in front of him and he goes, sucker, you're not good enough. But John 3.16 tells me that God so loved the world. That's why this little baby was born. The birth of Jesus began a sequence of events that led to the death of Jesus, obviously. But it says that God loved the world. Each and every person, he loves us. Whosoever believes in him. That, that, that's a broad range of category. Uh, hands up if you think you're outside the realm of whosoever. Is there a not whosoever in the room? Probably not. So we all fit into that category. But God loved us. The motivation for the birth of Jesus was love. And then just in case you don't get the point, he backs it up in verse 17 by going, just so you didn't hear what I just said, that God so loved the world, just in case you missed that, I'll say it a different way. God didn't send Jesus to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Jesus is talking here to a guy called Nicodemus. Nicodemus is not a follower of Jesus. He's just an inquirer. He's interested. He's seen some things. He's heard some things. And it's provoked him a little bit. And so he comes to Jesus and, and, and has this conversation with Jesus because he's just not sure. He's interested. Maybe he's inquisitive. He's curious. But he's certainly not a Jesus follower at this point. And Jesus could have said anything he wanted to about the character and the nature of God or about his own existence or why he was here. And, and he chose to communicate this point that I'm here because God loves you. Amen? I'm here because God loves you. I'm here because God doesn't want to condemn you. You might want to condemn yourself. And a lot of people do. They love to condemn themselves. Love to kick ourselves about because we're not perfect. And if you don't want to do it, I'm sure you've got friends who are happy to do it for you. I say friends in inverted commas. Wave in front of you everything you've done wrong, every time you fell short, every time you didn't hit the mark. Of all the things that Jesus could have said to this inquirer, he wanted him to understand this one thing. I want you to understand Nick. He called him Nick. It was a nickname, short. It's better than Demas. No, no, just making that up. There's nothing in the Greek to suggest that. It's just spitballing. He said, Nick, I want you to understand this. That God loves you. And I'm not here to condemn you. But Jesus was not the gift. Jesus was the means by which we get to access the gift. What did it say? It says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should get what? Eternal life. The, 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 the gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God is forgiveness. The gift of God is all those things that stand between me and him having relationship, being removed. That's the gift. Jesus was simply the means by which that gift was brought to earth. I mean, if Jesus was the gift, well, it only lasted 33 years, which is actually not bad because most presents you're going to give at Christmas are going to last one day longer than the warranty because that's the way they make them these days, isn't it? We'll give you a three-year, two-week and four-hour warranty because we know on the fifth hour it's going to blow up. It's like a timer in there. So Jesus was not the gift. But he was the way by which we get to access that gift. And that gift is on offer to every man, woman and child from the beginning of time through to the end of time until that time when this world ends and we believe that Jesus will come back. That gift is there on offer for each person in this room, outside this room, that goes to church, it doesn't go to church. Each person that believes in Jesus, that doesn't believe in Jesus. Anyone that's inquiring, interested, curious, even for those who do not care about the Jesus that we're singing about and the Jesus that, that, that this whole season revolves around of Christmas. Even the people that don't care. Remember Jesus hung on a cross. He said, Father, forgive them. They actually don't get it. Even in that moment, his love was so strong for these people. And here's the reality. That gift that God offers us, we all have the opportunity at any moment in time to grab a hold of that. 
and respond to that. There's, there's, there's three types of, of responses, I guess, that people may have to that. Now, one may be, you know, the people who just simply aren't interested. I've got an uncle of mine, and many years ago we went out west and, uh, for a Christmas thing when I was just a little kid. I remember very clearly in my mind, we went out to a place called Baradine. Anyone know where Baradine is? Yep, out in the, yeah, I used to live there. My pop built most of the town. He was a, worked at the, the sawmill there. And I remember my uncle coming down one year. We had Christmas there. Everyone got their presents. You know, everyone's excited, ripping open their presents. And Uncle Bill got a present and he put him in the boot of his car. I never forgot as a little kid, because when you're given a present, you rip that sucker open, don't you? Because you just want to see what's in it, don't you? You just tear it open because you want to see what's in it. You don't just gently, you know, peel back the tape and keep the paper unless you want to use it next year. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. I used to do that. But I remember Uncle Bill got the presents and he just chucked them in the boot of the car and drove off. He never opened them. The whole weekend we were there, he never opened them. Twelve months later, he came to visit again. And he opened the boot of his car and I was excited to see him and I went down the back. He opened the boot of his car and in the car were the presents still wrapped up. They were his, but he just didn't want it. They were his, within reach, but he just made a decision. He just didn't want it. And there'll be some people that just choose. They don't want the gift that's theirs, the gift that's ready for them, that God wants to give to them. Some people will just choose not to have that gift. There's two other responses that I've got written down on that computer. And I've got a memory like a sieve. But the best response... The best response is to accept the gift. The gift that God offers us right there within your grasp today. Jesus came as God's expression of love for you. And whether you like it or not, God loves you. That angers some people, frustrates some people. Some people can't believe it because they know who they are. Well, God knows who you are more than you know who you are. That God offers you a gift, forgiveness of sins, freedom from guilt, freedom from condemnation, freedom from that drudgery of walking around every day knowing that you are just not good enough. See, God knows you're not good enough. That's why he gave you access to this gift of forgiveness through his son, Jesus Christ. If you're here this evening and you have never taken seriously the person of Jesus, can I encourage you, think about Jesus. You probably spend a lot of time thinking about human beings who have been less influential. You'll probably spend a lot of time thinking about people that invented the light bulb. By the way, he was a Christian. Spend more time thinking about your favourite football player or your favourite chef, if there's such a thing as a favourite chef. You spend a lot of time thinking about a lot of things and a lot of people that have had way less influence on human history. You know, I, I, I used to have people say to me that I used to go around to university campuses and stuff many years ago. And we would go and we would just rock up in the cafeteria at lunchtime. We would just do open air preaching back when you were allowed to. Things have changed a bit now. And we used to get food thrown at us and called all sorts of things and threatened to be knocked out and we're going to bash you and all sorts of stuff. But one thing we would common, commonly hear from people is this, that you're just so gullible. You guys, you Christians are so gullible. Like think about what you believe and this whole Jesus thing. Think about it, you're so gullible. And I thought about that and thought, no, I don't think I am gullible. I've, I've done a little bit of research myself. I've looked into this story because there's a lot of angles you can look at it from inside the Bible, outside the Bible. But I came to the conclusion one day and I said to a person, you know, here's the thing. I heard about the birth of this Jesus, the death, the burial, the resurrection. So I decided to investigate it and look at it for myself. 
I decided to pick up a Bible and actually read what's in them ancient documents. I decided to ask Casper the Friendly Ghost if he's out there, show me. I decided to do all that stuff. And you know what? I came to the conclusion that he's real. And I'm a different person now because of the existence of God and what he's done in my life. I'm a totally different person. I said to somebody recently who was pushing my buttons. And when I say pushing my buttons, I mean pushing them like you would not believe. And I said to them, you want evidence for the existence of God? The fact that I'm not knocking you out right now is evidence for the existence of God in my life. You want to see a miracle? You're watching one right now. Because if it wasn't for God, (laughs) I apologize for being human. There's so much evidence for the existence of God and the story of Jesus. But here's the thing, all you people sitting there criticizing and saying, you guys are gullible. Probably, here's what's probably happened to most of you. Probably, you grew up in a culture that said God's irrelevant and God's dead and God's not real. You grew up in a culture that said the Jesus story is fake. He's right up there with a whole bunch of other classic fairy tales. You grew up in a culture that said it's not worth going to church. It's a waste of time. Prayer makes no difference. Them ancient documents are useless. No point wasting time. You grew up in a culture and a world that told you that. And you believed it. So you believe what everybody said. I checked it out for myself. Who's gullible? What's the definition of gullible here? So can I encourage you, if you're part of the crew that do Christmas and Easter, and a lot of people do, they love to come to church Christmas and Easter. I don't get it. When I was not a Jesus person, I was not a Jesus person. And I wasn't going near a church. I didn't care what day of the year it was. But I'm glad that you do. But can I encourage you, think about Jesus this Christmas. Think about the greatest gift that you could ever receive. A fresh, clean start to life. A laying down of everything that has gone before. Freedom from that nagging sense of guilt and condemnation. Regret, all that stuff that God wants to get into your heart and take out your heart, give you a fresh, clean heart, a fresh new start to life. That's the gift that God offers to us. Eternal life. Eternal life is not something that happens when we die. Jesus spoke of eternal life as something that begins the minute you open your heart to him and surrender your life to him. So when you're unwrapping your presence this year, think about the greatest gift. Eternal life. And realize that it's available for you anywhere, anytime, at any moment. You can cry out to Jesus. You can open your heart to God any moment. You can do it on the way home in the car tonight. You can do it sitting here listening to the music. You can do it eating a sausage. I did it on a roundabout in the middle of the Pacific Highway with trucks and buses going around and fumes everywhere. That's how much God loves us. Hey, we're going to get the kids up. Where's Christy and the kids? Well, I thought we were going to get them up. We are going to get them up. And they're going to do a song for us, I think, or a dance.